Hi everybody. Welcome to Homesteading Off the Grid. This evening here in my woodshed, which as of the last half an hour or so has become my wood shop, we are going to test a brand new skill 120 volt 9 inch bandsaw. Uh, I researched this saw quite a bit before I purchased it. I'm one of those people that love to make money but hate to spend it. So I thoroughly researched bandsaws, the different types on the market, the different brands, and I didn't need a big bandsaw for big projects. I needed a smaller bandsaw for smaller projects, craft type projects, uh, Christmas decorations, these sorts of things. And this skill, 120 volt, uh, nine inch bandsaw, from what I read, seemed to be pretty much the best bandsaws or one of the best bandsaws on the market for under $200. This didn't set me back much. I got it on Amazon for like $179.99, I believe. After taxes, it was $187. And we're Amazon Prime members, so we got free delivery. And from the time I placed the order until I got the saw delivered to my home by UPS, it took three days. So we're very happy with that. Um, I was going to show you how to assemble this saw in this video, but it was so simple you know, while testing what needed to be done to assemble it in preparation to make the video. So I kind of looked like I knew what I was talking about. I actually assembled it. It is so simple. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to reverse the phone and I'm going to show you what was needed to be done to assemble the saw uh, after we took it out of the box. And basically it was just putting the table on the saw. That's it really. Um, and then I'm going to show you the safety features of the saw. I'm going to show you how to operate the saw, and then we're gonna do a few cuts just so we can see how it works. I've done a few because it's been years. I used to work with band saws. Uh, I would make turning blanks for people who turn on lathes. No, I never turned. I don't quite have the patience for that, but I would produce the blanks because you know I, I burn a lot of firewood. This isn't even a small percentage of what we have. And I burn mostly oak, but every now and then I'll come into beautiful hardwoods like black cherry, black walnut, and it's so pretty I can't stand to burn it. So I'll cut it up into turning blanks for people who can turn on a lathe. But now I'm actually going to up my game a little bit and start making some wood projects myself. Now, with no further ado, let me show you how simple this set, this saw was to assemble. All right, so before we even get into that, I want to point out it's not a heavy saw, okay? I actually had my gate shut. I was out when the UPS guy came, so he left it at the gate, and I thought, oh gosh, I'm going to have to go get somebody to help me lift this in the back of the truck. I picked it up. It's not nearly as heavy as most of the firewood I split. It might weigh 35 pounds, if that. So carrying it into the wood shop and unboxing it was pretty easy work, okay? Now, I want to give credit and praise to whoever wrote the instruction manual because it's very simple to follow. Uh, simple English. Simple instruction, and of course, if you speak Spanish, the second half of it is written in, in Spanish. They give all the safety advice, pretty much explain everything. Very simple to follow. But basically, in a nutshell, the only assembly required was, let me get around to the other side so we can see better. Here's, you can see some cuts I was testing out. Putting this table on, the table and, uh, this, this, here's the miter and this is the, the guard here. The miter, the guard, and the table were the only three parts of this saw that were not assembled. Now, as far as putting the table on, it was as simple as four bolts. One, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, there's a, a, a washer and a locking washer. You go bolt, washer, locking washer. You line the table up with the holes under here. And then you screw it on. You use an adjustable wrench. You use a crescent wrench. I think it was three eighths was the setting. Very simple. And now what I will point out, if you're watching this video to do this, rather than actually read the instruction manual, I would caution you not to do that because I am not an expert. But before you slide the table on to this portion right here where you do screw that, this must come out so that you can run the blade. And I want to point out, I have the saw unplugged and I have, this is a really nice safety feature, safety keys out. Never operate or work on your saw unless it is unplugged and the, it's off, the safety keys out and it's unplugged. So with all that done, 
this just screws out. You, you, you use your hand. You don't even need a tool for that. So you get that out. You line it up on the blade. Coming from the other direction, of course. I slide it on and screw in those, those, uh, those four bolts. That's it. And then as far as this goes, look at this. That just comes straight up. This is the guard. And then you can come around on the back side. So you lift up on the front. And on the back, there's a hook. So as far as putting the guard on, you just hook it from the back side, put it down on the front, and then to latch it, you go like that. And they've got, got it spaced off here by inches. So let's say you want to make a cut that's an inch. And I personally don't use the guard a lot because what I've found, and it's not because of the brand of bandsaw. This is any, any bandsaw I've had in the past. A lot of times, the wood will get stuck up against the guard and it'll get jammed here. So once I've done a few cuts and I get pretty good at, at, at just keeping a straight line, I won't use the guard. If I'm going to cut an inch, I'll just move the guard out of the way. But if, if you want to use that guard to make sure you're exactly an inch, line it up in the front. Make sure in the back you're lined up here. And once you're lined up, you just simply come here and you lock it down. It's that simple. Then the miter, if you use a miter, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, it just slides right in like this. Look at that. Whoops, sorry. That is not a. That is not the fault of the saw. That's the fault of the operator because I'm trying to hold the phone with one hand and the miter with the other. But see if I actually just look at the miter instead of into the phone, it just slides right in. Very, very simple. You can loosen it. See that? It goes quicker. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. You can lock it in place if you want to, but it really is that simple. So that, again, that was all of the assembly required. Four bolts. I mean, that's why I didn't actually show you me doing it. You, you don't need to watch me screw in bolts, okay? Now, with all this said, um, I wanna show you how easy it is to access the inner workings of the saw. Again, with the saw unplugged, safety pin out, it's off. You've got an opening, Gizmo here, and you got one here. Look how simple this is. And it even says, hold on, this box is in my way. I slide that back. It even says open. So you just twist it to the open position, and you do the same down here. Now, if I wasn't holding a phone, I would just do this with both hands, and then it opens right up, okay? You've got your blade tensioner right here, and uh, it comes factory set as far as the blade settings, the angles of everything. And you can see I've done a couple cuts. <laughs> So I just blow the dust out of there. But, uh, I mean, the wheels turn easily. You've got the, you can adjust the wheel brushes. Of course, this brush is here to brush the sawdust off of that, that wheel after it comes through and collects sawdust. And, and remember, if you're doing any sort of cutting to any sort of degree, you want to open this thing up and clean it out. Regularly, you don't want to let your your dust jam up in here. This will jam up your wheels. It'll cause your your blade to wear out sooner. And then to shut it, simply do the opposite. Turn it this way. Make sure it's shut down here too. Oh, I have to put the phone down for a minute. I'm gonna to have to use two hands. Bear with me. This is your commercial break. There you go. Drink more Ovaltine. Okay, not sponsored. I was actually twisting it the wrong way. Look at this. I can do it one-handed. It was simple. I was just going the wrong way. I like how the saw also has an LED light on it, which comes on automatically when you turn the saw on. So it's a pretty simple saw, as you can see. And now that I've shown you how simple it is to assemble and how there's just not really a whole lot to it, and I've, I've explained the safety features, I'm going to show you uh, how it cuts. And again, before we, we can operate the saw, we do need to plug it in. Okay. And then this is a really neat safety feature because look, the saw is plugged in, but without this key in, it won't turn on. See that? So even though you turn off your saw, you unplug it, you got children around or anybody, you know, Take this thing with you and hide it in your desk drawer somewhere. Put it somewhere where nobody can find it and they won't be able to turn the saw on. But all you gotta do is put it in there and then watch. It comes right on. And there's that LED light, LED light. And there's the blade. And as you can tell, it's not a loud saw. I don't have to scream for you to hear me. So 
it's a you know I, I'm hearing impaired. I have tinnitus and and some hearing problems, and that you know I'm able to operate it. Well, I don't know. Maybe it is a loud saw. I don't know. I'm hearing impaired. You'll have to listen to the video and see for yourself. But I don't feel like I need to wear ear pro when I'm using a saw. It's not a bad idea to always wear ear pro, okay? But it doesn't sound loud to me. Now, let me move this box, set the camera up, and let me show you some cuts. All right. Now, you'll have to excuse the filthiness appearance of my wood shop because it has been for four years a wood shed, okay? There will be some cleaning going on here before I expose myself to this environment to any great degree. All right, it's about the saw, not how badly my walls need painted, okay? Now, before we cut, I want to point out, and you guys know this if you're considering, and maybe you don't, maybe you're new. You don't want to wear like loose fitting clothes when you're working with any sort of saw or power tool because that stuff can get caught, okay? And I love to wear gloves when I'm splitting firewoods. I don't get splinters, but you don't want to really wear gloves when you're using this stuff because they can get caught and they can suck your fingers into the saw. And even though this saw doesn't seem to be loud to me, but again, I am very much hearing impaired, so you want to test this for yourself. Uh, we do need to wear eye pro when we're using saws because, you know, stuff can fly up in our eyes. So, so far I have pretty good vision, except for not being able to read anything within two feet of my face because I'm almost 50, the gift of age. So, we're going to start simple. Um, this is some maple. Now, this is still green. And if you've ever worked with saws, you'll know sometimes the blades will, will have a tendency to catch green wood more so than dry wood. So it would cut dry or seasoned wood or kiln dry wood better. We're going to cut some about one inch green maple, okay? Now, again, you can use the guard. I've got it set for an inch. It is adjustable. So if you want to use a guard, you can do that. But I'm going to show you why I typically don't. Okay, it's been years since I've done this, but I used to do it quite a bit. I'm pretty good at keeping a straight line. But I'm going to do it with the, with the guard and watch what happens. And again, keep your hands, your fingers clear of the blade. And I'm not, you know, I can use the miter to show you how that works. Put the miter in. I like to keep it a little bit loose. So here we go. I'll point out, when you turn the blade on, before you start your cut, make sure the blade is at full speed before you start your cut, okay? I mean, look, went through that like nobody's business, huh? Now, the saw's off, the blade is off. I'm going to remove this piece, keeping my hand clear of the blade. But look at that, here's a one inch by one inch green maple uh, wood cookie or uh, wood slice. These are called wood slices, okay? Went through it pretty easy. Um, gee, and even with the miter, it, it didn't stick that time. I think when I was doing my, my test cuts, I had the miter too tight and I just didn't have such freedom. So let's try it again with a loose miter, keeping it straight. Again, a one inch cut. Smooth, look at that, smooth, flat, smooth cut. Cutting that like nobody's business. Here we have a perfect one inch by one inch. So it does pretty good on a one inch. What if we were to up the ante a little bit and go with, this is about two and a half, almost three inches at the widest part, okay? Now, I didn't point this out, but this is another way, another, op another uh, operational uh, procedure with the saw. This is the blade guard. It's adjustable. I actually had that too high when cutting this one inch. You want to keep that guard only about an eighth of an inch above the wood, the wood project that you're using because that, that uh, allows the blade to sustain less tension so that your blade will last longer. So that was a mistake I made there. I should have lowered that. And to lower that, there's a mechanism on the back. You turn it counterclockwise. And then you'll then this big knob, once it's loose, you see it can go down. So when I was cutting that one inch cut, I really should have had this guard down right here to take the tension off that blade, okay? Like I said, it's been years. Rookie, like rookie again, coming out of retirement, mistake, whatever you call it. 
But now, so let's say you're down here cutting a one inch like I should have been. If you want to cut a larger piece, you come all the way up, okay? And then you tighten this mechanism again. So this way it stays there. Now, let's see how it does with about two and a half, two and three quarter inch, okay? Again, this, this cuts up, this has a, a, a clearance here of about three inches. This saw is not for big heavy duty projects. And again, it costs $179, it's 120 volts, nine inch, that, that has to deal with the width of the platform here. So don't let that confuse you when you're shopping for saws. Now I could cut this off at nine inches this way, but I can't get something nine inches this way underneath here. Three inches is pretty much the max, okay? So let's go with two and a half, two and three quarter. See how it cuts a, a larger piece of wood. Now again, this is a smaller saw cutting a large piece of wood for the saw's size. Now that's what I was talking about earlier. You see I got about halfway through there and then it got stuck. Two reasons. Number one, partially because the wood is green, but number two, because of that guard. If you get your angle off or if this is not cut at a, at a purely straight angle from your, from your last cut, it will crunch up against that guard and then you'll have that happen. That's why when I'm cutting larger pieces, I don't use a guard. So what I'll do to prove my point, not that I have to be right, I don't have to be right. I'd rather be happy than be right. So I've learned to let other people be right and I just be happy because even when they're right, sometimes they're just still not happy. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna go for it again. And uh, I'm even gonna take the miter out, okay? Because when you freehand it, once you're pretty good at making straight cuts, it's the easiest way to do it. And it is safe. So make sure to keep your cuts straight and keep your hands away from the blade. Watch. All right, and sometimes you might just have to pull it out and go around from the other side, but I tried to go in from the same cut I already had that might've been at an angle. So now let's go without the guard, without the miter, anew, and see how it does. Again, this is almost three inches. This is about the maximum this saw can take. We're gonna go at about, we're gonna make this one about a half inch thick, okay? See, that was pretty much perfect because I didn't have the guard to get the wood jammed on and uh, I, I made sure to keep it straight and you see we got a straight cut. So this is about a three inch wood cookie or wood slice, about a half inch thick. And again, I've still got some, some practice to make up. It's pretty much, it's thicker on this side than it is on that side. But uh, I'm gonna see if I can zoom in on the actual blade and show you how smooth that cut is. You don't need to see me and hear me. So let's, there we go. Watch this, let's try it again, close up. Again, always allow the blade to come up to full speed before you start your cut. We're gonna go for half an inch again this time. That was a very smooth cut. A very smooth cut. I'm gonna zoom out, make sure you can see this. Oh, that's too far. There we go, all right. Very smooth cut. You can see this time, it's pretty much the same thickness all the way around. So that was good. You know, that was a very good cut.
So what's my take on this uh, nine inch? And you know what? Look, I gotta practice what I'm preach. Take out the safety key and unplug it. I'm finished, I'm finished. That's all we're doing tonight. I just wanted to test it and I just wanted to share it with you. So we've gotta put safety first. But what's my take on this? I think um, as far as for value for dollar, it seems to be okay. Now, only time will tell if it sustains its okayness. I mean, I might come in here tomorrow and work on it for, with uh, work with it for 30 minutes to an hour and a band might snap. I'll have to see. And if that's the case, I will certainly give an update. But for $187 after taxes, free shipping, and I got it on Amazon, we're Amazon Prime members. Um, after, I think, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. This was my seventh cut. I did I did four or five before I started running the videotape here. But already you can see it's pretty easy to keep a straight line with this saw. It cuts a very smooth surface. Um, I like it. I mean, for less than $200, again, it's a skill, 120 volt, nine inch bandsaw, not sponsored. This is not a paid promotion. I just wanted to share with you folks out there who are interested in getting a bandsaw. I like it. So as of now, I have no complaints. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing uh, to my channel, but I've got to warn you, even though this is a homesteading channel, most of the videos have nothing to do with homesteading, power tools, firewood, and that kind of stuff. Some do, but most of them have to do with the potential Bigfoot Sasquatch that may or may not be living in the woods behind my house. <laughs> I know it's crazy for a guy who just did a tutorial about a bandsaw to even say anything like that, but... <sighs> It's a world we live in.